Hey, welcome back to some more Star Trek Online on the Xbox. How's everyone doing? Good, I hope. Right, not much changed. Uh, I've just renamed uh, our ship, so now we're called the USS Deathstroke. And um, we're going to carry on, uh, or pick up where we left off last time. Which is the improbability of reasons. Should be just here. Here we go. Moran's in trouble. Those Klingons won't stop until she's gone. We need to get in there before it's too late. Red alert. All hands, Barristers. Mayday, Mayday, this is the USS Baran. We're taking heavy fire and need immediate assistance. Baran, this is Deathstroke. We're on route. Ah, you come to save your comrades. Honorable, if not foolish. Come, <laughs> come and save them. If you have the courage to stand in battle against true Klingon warriors. That's a car! Looks like he didn't car. run far after Jehula beamed him out of prison. What? No good deed goes unpunished? You now, if I'd listened to the warden, instead of saving a car, this wouldn't be happening. You did the best you could back there, El. Commander. A car's responsible for his actions, not you. Let's focus on doing what we can to help the Baran. Agreed. Well, let's give them something else to shoot at. This got him. Let's put him post. Looks like we picked up some more Klingon attention.
this down. This can't be happening. Uh, scan the area. Escape pods. Did she launch any escape pods? If anyone got away, we we need to find them before the Klingons do. This can't 
be happening? Scan the area. Escape pods. Did she launch any escape pods? If anyone got away, we've... We need to find them before the Klingons do. It looks like uh, it looks like one escape pod uh, launched. Beam aboard. Sick bay's reporting in. Captain Lorca needs extensive medical facilities. More than you have on board your ship. We need to get him to a star base or to Starfleet Medical. Easier said than done, Commander. I understand, Captain. The Ion Storm is getting worse and Pryor's world can't be left in the dead. If you can spare just one of your shots, we'll get him that way. Please? He's going to die if we don't do something, and I won't... I can't let that happen. Have Captain Law secure for transit. Shuttle bay. Prep for launch. Walk away from, huh? Tricorder isn't showing any serious injuries. You'll live. That most breathable? But this is a class P environment. The cold doesn't kill us. The Klingons will. No way they're gonna let us go now. We need shelter. Fast. Damn. This place reminds me of some of the places my family dragged me to for a vacation back home. You really haven't lived until you go camping on Andoria. Makes this place look like Waikiki Beach. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, Ensign. But those of us who didn't grow up on an ice moon aren't as amused. Emergency survival protocol. Break out the gear and supplies and find shelter. I don't know what this weather finishing with the Klingons started. 
I'll check the emergency uh, compartment on the, the side of the shuttle. Oh, she's pretty banged up, isn't she? Hmm. Open emergency supply hatch. Hatch supplies. I'm reading some cave systems up on that mountainside. Might be a good place to set up camp. Maybe even a distress beacon. I can use the shuttle's emergency transporter to send Captain Lorca and another person there. Get them out of this wind and cold. It's only good for one transport, though. Okay. Let's do that and head for shelter. Hey, while I'm thinking about it, we lost some pieces of the shuttle while we were coming down. Some of that might be useful here. We should keep an eye out for anything we can easily salvage. Understood. You better go with Lorca. We'll catch up with you later. Beam them away. <sighs> we made it. It takes guts to beam into a cave with an emergency transporter mostly held together with wishful thinking. Now, we just need to get there ourselves. Fashion way, on Shank's mare, through a frozen wasteland. <sighs> you take me to all the best places, Ellen. <laughs> Let's get out of here before the Klingons show up, or we're still. They fire from orbit. Right. House of interest. A quick scan. Nope. So it looks like it's this way. Come on, guys. Go for the morning job. Should we worry about leaving tracks that the Klingons can follow? See those ice formations. Temperatures get high enough to thaw, then refreeze. So, the snow will probably melt enough to lose our tracks in the next few hours. Right, and if it stays cold and humid, we'll get more snow anyway. Good news. Now we just have to worry about finding our way out of here. Wait, you see those mounds of snow? Some of them are just going to be light powder. Some of those were built. Watch your step. Oh. There might be life forms in those. They might not like unwanted guests. Okay, got it. Kerwin to team. My tricorder says there's a piece of the shuttle manifold near your position. Grab it if you can, okay? We could really use it. We'll get that component. We got your widget, Kerwin. Never mind the beasties. Uh, sorry about that. I wonder if they were staying close to it for warmth. Good work. Keep it coming. We're gonna need a lot more tricks to survive. 
Right, so this area, so let's go this way. Follow this. What, 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 what are you doing? Ah, maybe we have to go around that way. Right, okay. We're just going back the way that we came. Up and around. Come on, guys. Oh, it's going to be some more of those beasties here, I bet you. Fumaroles. I was wondering if we'd see any. Here they are. Look, geothermal activity pushes heated water up and forms those bubbling mud pools. Wouldn't recommend taking a dip, though. That stuff is scalding. Right, got it. Kerwin here. I'm picking up another piece of debris near you. Looks like some live circuitry survived thanks to a Duraloy shell. Can you grab it for me? Thanks. It's not in an obvious spot, probably somewhere among uh, the greys. Hmm. Oh my goodness, what the heck? Ah, there it is there. Opponents. Guys, let's hoof it. Hey, you see that over by the rocks? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's another piece of the shuttle. A quick scan. There's some more beasties about. That was a cave. Oh, nice. What are these marks in the ice? Tracks of some kind? It's big, whatever it is. Let's not wait oh. to find out more. We have to go in there. No, we can't go in there. That's fine. That's good. Oh, I guess we're going to come across some kind of yeti. Where are we? Left, far away. Left, right, to the left. To the left, to the left. Ah. Never thought I'd be happy oh. to see a cave, but here we are. I can almost feel my toes again. This was a good choice. 
defensible position, adequate shelter, picking up some water inside as well. Might be able to cobble up some fortifications by carving out some rock. It's a start. Where's Captain Lorca? Looks like they're a little deeper in the cave. If I know Kerwin, he's probably hard at work cobbling a warp core together out of rocks, a hypo spray casing, and a belt buckle. Thanks. Chief, let's find out, shall we? There's nothing in the area. There's gonna be something in here though, but yeah. There are four anomalies in the area. Great. Captain Lorca's life signs are stable for now. His medical unit is functioning normally, and he didn't suffer any further wounds during the crash. At least he's Good still alive. For a change. Nice work, everyone. Let's set up camp. Kerwin, see if there's a way to send a coded distress beacon. To Pev, we need to know if there's anything we can use to survive around here. Uh, Patel and I can start uh, setting up the camp with our supplies. I'll uh, reheat that rock that Kerwin's heated up. this together captain there we are and we have to be prepared to fight you and i both know it's only a matter of time before the klingons find us i need to know you'll be ready to make the hard call if it comes down to it meaning We're dealing with klingons there's no room for weakness the vulcans know this when you face klingons act from a position of strength whenever possible when they come you need to be ready to hit them hard give no quarter uh, don't you worry, I'll be ready, Captain. I've fought Klingons before. You have, but not like this. You might find yourself in a situation real soon where doing things by the book won't get the job done. The people depending on you will die, understand? Trust your instincts when it comes to that, not the regulations. Be prepared to make the hard call. With all due respect, I believe that we can be true to Starfleet values and survive. Check in on the rest of the team. They need to stay motivated. Right. Roger that. It's not luxury accommodations on Ryza, but at least the cave's secure. We need some more food. Something indigenous proves to be edible. Our emergency rations will get us through a few days, but that's all. How are you holding up? <sighs> I'm here. Watching the Baran go, that was a hard hit for all of us. We lost a lot of friends up there. Right now, I think we need to get warmer. This cold's taking a toll, even in the cave, out of the wind. Maybe Kerwin can figure a way to insulate the walls a little. What's the story between you and Laundry? Ellen and I have served together for some time. If you mean personally, well, let's just say that the captain is aware. And he's given us the usual speech about how personal relationships can interfere with work. And so far, he's trusted us to be professional, which we've been. So, uh, the captain doesn't interfere as long as it doesn't affect your work. That's right. He's a pragmatist, and so is Ellen. She's really good at getting things done. She's not afraid to take a hard look at a tough situation and getting down to business. Tells me I have my head in the clouds sometimes. But 
I think she likes it, honestly. What's your role in laundry team? As chief of security, I do a lot of team management, strategy, and planning. My specialties are in operational readiness and field leadership. Basically, it's my job to keep every one of my people in top form and to deploy them where their skills will do the most good. Okay, now make sure that you get something warm to eat. I'll go and check on the others. One down, two to go. Let's speak to Lieutenant Kerwin. Ah, good morning. I'm still working on this transmitter. It's pretty banged up, I'm afraid. If only we had some more spare parts. Uh, I'll make it. And to think... I was considering becoming a hollow novelist before I joined Starfleet. Good thing I picked up a few skills with transmitters and recorders. Is there anything that I can do to help? Well, if you're serious about going out in that cold again, keep your eyes peeled for metal ores and deposits. Anything with magnesium, sulfur, or other reactive ores. Stuff like that. Stuff we can burn. Speaking of ores, we could also use magnetic or radioactive ores. Those I can use for primitive power cells. So what's your story? I've actually known Landry since before we joined Starfleet. It was always something she really wanted to do. The chance to get out there, to live a bigger life. As for me, I was a video novelist for several years before she convinced me to join. I'm glad she did. On most days, anyway. Oh, and, and don't listen to Patel. I didn't join because I lost a bet with Landry. Honest. So, uh, what's your I'm role? I'm a technical security specialist. Computer security, encryption, force field, surveillance devices, explosives, the works. It's engineering, but, you know, without the engines. A uh, little joke there. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I'll keep that in mind. Right. Uh, to Pev. I'm mixing up some nutrient broth from our supplies. Not the best smelling okay. stuff, but it'll keep us alive. We're gonna need a lot of calories in this weather, so we should try to find more food if we can. So, do you think that there's anything edible here? Well, we've already seen some wildlife. We're likely to find some edible fungi or mosses in the caves. Maybe some root vegetation. I don't know if I'd want to nibble on anything more complex. The contents could be dangerous to us. So... What's your role on I'm the team? I'm an assault team specialist. Close combat, automatic weapons, squad support. If it involves mixing it up in a fight, that's in my area of expertise. Two-time Ushan <laughs> champion back in my hometown. It's got me through a few scrapes with Klingons. They thought their batlets were the last word in close combat. <laughs> they thought wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Clearly. Because you're still standing. Damn right. Combat isn't Starfleet's top priority. Sometimes we have to fight to protect what we value. Klingons are finding out what Vulcans have known for a long time. And Dorians know how to fight. We fight to win. Do you have any plans for when you get out, out yeah. of here? I have a family back on Andoria. Two wives and a husband. We're all eagerly awaiting a young one any day now. Knew that signing on to Starfleet would make career demands on my time, of course. But I'll be glad when this is over and I have a chance to see them again. Hmm. Well, I expect that we're all going to be due some shore leave once we make it off this moon. There was an Earth writer who wrote that young men always feel the need to get married, or get in uniform, or both at the same time. I wound up doing the latter. I just don't like leaving opportunities on the table chance to have a family and the chance to serve are both too important for me to let them pass by. Okay, hold on to that attitude and we'll see where we go from here. Doing the rounds, eh? Making sure your team's ready for what's ahead? Good call. I'd do the same. What's ahead? Yeah, not a lot of good news there. Stranded on a frozen rock, no rescue in sight, and the sky belongs to the Klingons right now. Klingons, beginning to wish I'd never laid eyes on them. 
We're still at one piece, aren't we? And that's what counts. Good point. The captain's still alive, and I'm not. Commander Patel, still with me, still with us. Starfleet trains us to deal with adversity. We'll figure something out. For now, let's see if we can scrape what we need to survive from this rock while we're here. Right, come on, let's get moving. Right, there's four anomalies in the area. Search materials. Guess we need to go outside, is that? Go up here. No, we can't go past there. So the arrows are saying go this way. I guess that's. Outside it is then. Losing the Baran was hard. You know, I don't have much left, but I am ready to fight for it. For them. My people from the Baran, they're my family. Starfleet? They give us tools and training, sure. But the most important thing that they give us is each other. We've got, to, oh, we've got to collect these. Bad idea. It's going below. Oh. Oh. That should be enough. Let's go. Pretty sure I know what made those marks in the ice now.
we better hope none of those come to visit the cave. I thought it was going to be a big foot, not a big skull for you. Honey, I'm uh -huh. home. Oh, good. Wait till you see what I've done with the cave. Huh. What you got there? Magnesite? Ah. I'll take those off your hands. The indium can give us some power. Just don't loiter around it. It's radioactive. I can probably use the magnesite to make some explosive charges. You know, just in case. Yeah, that sounds good. Explosives? In a cave like this? That, uh... That's not one of your best ideas, Kerwin. Even if we don't collapse it on our heads, we'd probably trap ourselves. We'd be stuck! Unless we could burn a new way out with our phasers. Ah, you have a point. Sealing off the cave entrance and finding another way out is superior to being devoured by those ice creatures you mentioned. Put the explosive near the tunnel entrance. See if you can rig up a remote detonator. Better to have the option to not need it than to need it and not have it. Mm, wise words. I should have just enough parts to make a short-range radio detonator for the explosives. I can work on that while someone else sets up these canisters. With the magnesium as an accelerant, and some of the gelled thruster fuel from the shuttle. They'll go up once a charge is applied to them. I'll install the explosives. Okay. So... to see you made it back in one piece. Judging by the looks on your faces, you didn't come back empty-handed. Oh, that's good news. Come and have a seat, Ellen. Got a reasonably smooth rock, nice and heated up for you. Ah, we found some useful materials. Looks like yes. the best rock in the house, too. Thanks, Emma. You're always looking out. Okay, let's talk next steps. Kerwin, we're gonna need that transmitter real soon. We've bought a little time, but not much. This cold's not going anywhere, and neither are the Klingons. Yeah, all good points. Time's not on our side here. You're not wrong, but consider. We survived the Klingon ambush, and a crash landing, and those things that tried to eat us, whatever the hell they were. The captain's still with us, and we have each other. Remember, we're Starfleet. We can't give in to despair. When times are worst, that's when we need to rise to our best. <laughs> You're right. We can't let these hardships grind us down. Agreed. Let's not lose sight of what matters the most here. Okay, everyone, get some rest. I know I'm me. Please tell me we have some more of that moss around. It's keeping me warm, but this floor is doing a number on my back. Hmm. I think that we can manage something, uh, Commander. Right. Day three. here. The distress beacon's operational. It actually works. 
I mean, it's ugly and full of hacks, but we can send out a distress signal with the beacon now. Ah, nice one. Excellent Hold work. On. If we use the beacon, won't the Klingons receive the signal too? If they're still trying to find us, they'll know exactly where we are once we turn that on. This cozy little cave will be crawling with Klingons sooner than any of us would like once that happens. Is there any way to, like, mask the signal? None, unfortunately. We turn it on, and it'll be out there for all to see, friend and foe alike. We're hoping that Federation ships at Pryor's World will hear it and respond before the Klingons do. It's a risk, but one we need to think about taking soon. Hmm. We'll need to be ready for the Klingons' response as Agreed. well. They know we crashed. And unless they gave up the chase, they're still out there. And they will come running the moment they detect this beacon. Count on it. So, we need to be ready to deal with them. And buy ourselves enough time for Starfleet to get here and extract us from this godforsaken ice ball. Well, this cave's pretty defensible. To a point. They'll eventually bottle us in and use grenades or chemicals. We have to make it too costly for them to hunt us down. Catch them before they catch us. Ambush them. Yeah. Yeah, that's risky, but we do know the terrain. Here's the plan. They'll beam down at the shuttle wreckage and start searching from there. Their teams will eventually track our route, so we hit them on the way. We'll ambush them at the snowdrifts, then fall back, fighting our way towards the cave. Make them pay for every meter. We don't have to stop them. Just slow them down long enough for Starfleet to reach us. Attracting that much fire is risky, but I don't see a better idea. Let's take position by the fumaroles and make the Klingons come to us. can be beaten. Meet them with strength. Seize every opportunity. Give no quarter. Fight hard and fight to win. And I'm just going to leave it for there for now. And we'll be back later.